Hey, what is this? Could you find out what this is about? Yes. Ask others too. The context of this prototype was Ellie Chan was leaving NIS in December. Ellie's story is often told to explain how NIS came to be an inclusive learning community. We went through a series of questions. There were more props when we were looking at the product to give some feedback. And some of the questions were, does the story make sense? Is there anything we've missed? Have we told a story? Is it timeless? Is it sensitive? Is it truthful? Does it reflect our mission? And then there are three questions about scalability. So this is only one. We're telling the story of Ellie. What other stories do we have within our school to be able to tell as well? We were given the opportunity to catch and safeguard a moment of history in our school. Okay, so the, the prototype looked at student data and how teachers had access to different bits of information about students that were new to NIS. Uh, one of the challenges, I think, is that teachers are by nature ambitious, but the, the nature of, of design thinking, particularly wicked design problems, is to look at small challenges that can be solved in a short amount of time, that can be prototyped in a short amount of time, and that a multitude of these small challenges being solved would then address these large problems. We've continued the prototype just because it really helped us see more behaviors. I think that this truly helps keep the class in alignment and really helps create a sense of social responsibility and it really um, taught the kids to help each other. So I wanted to work to improve the range of vegetables and food and as well as teaching them how to eat healthy. And so there was very many points we were on. We only choose some. I think what they should look at for the new prototype is withdrawing Tier 4 highly abled students at middle school and DP and providing them with strategies so they're part of the learning support group. Withdraw these kids, give them the mentor, let them fly. We got to a point where we were able to articulate two or three very specific recommendations and because I'm the person that can drive some of those, I sort of became a champion. But those recommendations aren't really scaling of a prototype or further prototypes. They're more direct changes in job description and program expectations for teachers. We're mixing up the students together. It's not always Miss Ham focusing with this class, Miss Cream with another, but the movement between the classes is quite fluid depending on what skill that we're focused on. And then we wanted to see improvement within the band of analysis. The final outcome was a website where you can improve sustainably. I think from prototyping that would change would be the way 
we used it after we had created a prototype itself, so putting it forth to a greater part of the community or having a strategic plan of what to do after the prototype itself was released. We had a, our first prototype, we took that to Miss Kylie Pretty and she looked over it and so she suggested we make a forum on the website, we make an email address that people can contact us and um, it really became a lot more user friendly because we got a ton of feedback on new prototypes that we can go with or how we can improve this one even further. is that the sellers pack every single kind of wedges in a different bag. So if you go there without the bags and you come back with them. I thought maybe it's a good idea to try to change this. My hope was that we will involve some students. It came out that market already working on this as well, so they're aware of the problem. They count how many bags they use. They tell it's around 4,000 bags every day. That's a lot. Uh, and they give us a permission to screen the video. Okay, so I had um, an idea and uh, somebody suggested that I do it as a prototype. And I was like, well, why would I want to do it as a prototype? I just want to do it. And initially I thought, oh, this is just going to be some hoop jumping so that I can get it done. So I started the process and I was a little bit sceptical, but actually what I discovered is that along the way, the process really, really helped me to make the changes that I wanted to. And the greatest thing about it was that I had to have a team of people to um, work with. And they had ideas and suggestions and feedback that I just would never have thought about on my own. The language is going to stop them from deeper learning. We're just adept Mandarin speaking in the class. And also for the other foreign kids, we want to just create this Mandarin environment at the same time. And for the other Chinese kids, when we're talking about some UOI subjects, which are hard for them to understand, I just give them some Mandarin. And uh, they can just uh, give me feedbacks or they can just let me know their thoughts in Mandarin. So Artstastic is all about integrating the performing arts into the classroom, into the homeroom. If I integrate into the homeroom, then when I'm not there, they can continue to work with the materials and work with the ideas that I've provided them because I wanted it to be far more authentic. So my reason for starting the prototype was so that people could see how it could link in with what they're doing in language work, what they're doing with math, what they're doing in their UOI, and how it could be used in the homeroom when a specialist teacher is in there. This change in pedagogy will give the students the opportunity to aim for a personal excellence. So whether it's one particular sport, it could be an area of fitness, um, and they use people from uh, teachers with a particular ex expertise, or they use people from outside of the environment. So it could be parents or somebody like myself to come in and actually help them with that specific sport or that area of, uh, of fitness.
That makes sense. Wow!